Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about entity relationship diagrams and UMLs and flowcharts. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do programmers have to use entity relationship diagrams or UMLs or flowcharts or things like that? Because nobody seems to be talking about it on YouTube, so, or rather, everybody's lying about it on YouTube. How do you think about this? So the short answer is that it depends mostly on the company that you're working for and the office culture that they use. And it also depends on your role within that company. Let me explain. So I've had a few people talk to me about technical documentation, UMLs and things of this nature. And I know that this might be a little bit confusing, but the thing is, guys, this is one of those things that it's extremely up for discussion if this is going to be a useful thing or it's going to be a bad thing. Some, every company, ha or well, most companies don't use like UMLs or like fine grained mappings of how their services fit together at a code level. It's very common though that companies map out like their infrastructure or like just the flow chart of the different network calls that might happen. But it, it kind of comes down to where you work. If you're working in a really large corporation, an old one that is still like where most of management, there's still people in their in like middle aged people who've been coding forever and forever, you might have a few people there who say that, oh, you know what, every story should include a UML chart of the feature that you just built. And the thing is, guys, that there's really no way for me to say that, oh, you shouldn't learn how to do this. The honest truth is that learning how to write a UML chart, I mean, shit, guys, I, if you asked me to do it today, I would have to look up some of the symbols and stuff of this nature today. I would have to. I couldn't just sit down and write a perfectly, perfectly documented chart of a feature or things of this nature, but it takes for someone, like for, for a fairly experienced programmer, I mean, it takes minutes to learn how to make a decent UML chart, like to just learn the symbol. It's not that complicated. And the same thing goes for a flow chart or like a, to just map out what the different network calls are. Like you have to understand what these things are intended to be for. They are intended to give someone a high, like a high level of pers a high level perspective of the feature. Now the reason why quite like you might see people use a flow chart to just n map out the network calls and not always create a UML chart or something like that to to handle the mapping all of all of all the code is because code usually in a more advanced system becomes so complicated that it's all like it doesn't really help you. You might have this chart and everybody looks at it and nobody gets what it's ha what's happening. I mean, shit, there are tools that can generate these charts. You don't have to sit and make a UML chart yourself. If you wanted to, there, like, your IDE, depending on what language you're using, might actually be able to just map that out for you. And I've done this on a small project and it looks like a fucking spider web. It's just not comprehensible. So the whole, like, the whole point, quote unquote, to this might actually be, like, well, most of the value might actually be gone just because the complexity is so high. So as an example, in my company, we don't do that. Usually we, do, we never ever map out like a flow chart or a UML chart of how the different entities are related to each other or how different services connect to each other at the code level because it's simply too complicated for anybody to make anything useful from it. But if there is a need for it, let's say that we have an audit, which sometimes has happened, like we, you have security audits from different stakeholders that they want to check that you're doing safe coding, then that might be a situation where we would do it. And usually we don't because they have the auditing companies, they usually have their own static analysis tools and like they do their own thing, right? And we don't really have to provide that. But something that is very common is that we're starting a new integration project or we're starting a new project with some third stakeholder parts, third party stakeholder. And they want to understand like just how the flow is going to work because we're working with developers who they don't work with our system, we don't work with their system. So we need to have a way of communicating how our, both of our system works. So what we do is that then we create a flow chart where basically we just map out with some simple boxes. I mean, there's no, 
real strict rule necessarily for, for all of this, or there might be a standard, but if there is, very few people seem to be following it, where you simply map out that, oh, I have system A here talking to system B, and they make a call here over here, and then the response is going to be that, and then they make another call over here, and then they respond by that. These sorts of things are useful for you to just have a basic grasp of. If you go on YouTube or on YouTube or figure out some blog or something like that that can teach you the like guess the basic of how to do this, you're gonna be fine. This is not something that you're gonna well, I can't say that it never it's never gonna happen because as I said there's always a extreme case and the extreme case is in this case that someone would test you on this. As a junior developer, I would find it very odd if you were to be have to create a UML chart or something like that to prove that you are a competent developer because it's simply not important for most use cases. It might be, it, it will be important sort of to know about this if you are an architect or if you're more senior experience and you're asked to manage a technical integration or a project where you're go your company's gonna collaborate with another company, then yes, it might make a lot of sense because you simply, you use this to these tools just to give people an overview of how your system works because you don't have time to train them like an in-house person who's going to work for the company. So what I want you to take away from this is that knowing how to write technical documentation and things of this, this nature is not all that important for a junior developer. And if you want to learn just what's normal, which is usually a flow chart, a UML chart or things of this nature, we're talking about a personal investment of maybe a few hours. It's not a big deal to learn this. I swear, even for a complete junior, it's I mean, it's just a picture, like a, a diagram with some symbols. That's what it is. And there's not that much complexity to it. So if you want to learn that, go for it. It's, it might, it's going to be semi-useful for you, but usually only if you're dealing, as I said, with the external party or if you're an architect or a senior level developer or something like that, where you're basically supposed to do these sorts of things. You might be a technical documentation writer or something like that. And of course, you might also work in a company where they still really value all of this work and th this sort of patent process. And then you might have to learn it as well. But usually this is not something that you have to be worried about. It's not a really big investment to learn it. And there are things that you should focus a lot more on than this. But as I said, input a few hours just to get the basics of this. And that should usually be enough for you. Unless you're going to be a technical architect or something like that. Have a great day.